In this video, we will extend our pit droid model by adding servos to the joints and also configuring those servos to interact with the real world servos. Adding servos is actually a very simple and straightforward part. Let's start by selecting the next servo, click on create part and select the servo. We will name the servo neck servo. Do the same steps for the head servo and you could have guessed it, please call it also head servo. We now have to combine the joints and the servos. We will start with the next servo. So select the next servo on the part setup panel on the right hand side scroll down to linked motor and you will see that there is currently no motor linked with this joint so click the button link to a motor you will notice that on the left hand side in the parts list all motors are highlighted as we want to align the joint called next servo with the motor called next servo you just need to click on next servo to create the alignment. The part setup on the right hand side will show you that the linkage of joint and motor was successful. Now do the same steps for combining the joint called head servo with the motor called head servo. I'm honestly not sure if the motors need to comply to the parent-child relationship as we see it on the parts list but as i am a fan of having nice visual structure uh, let's move the motors in this case it's only the next servo motor to its right place in the parts list hierarchy now that we have defined our joints and servos we need to connect them to the real world scenario. I do assume that you have something very similar set up to the Arduino and servo driver setup that I explained in a previous video. And I also assume that you have your Arduino connected via USB to your computer that is running Botango. I will not go into the details of different hardware setups and capabilities, but will explain my setup and how I got it working. Let's take a look at the hardware status by clicking the hardware icon on the right top side of the screen. And you will see there's a red indication light showing that the hardware is not operating at the moment. The hardware status window that opens will show you something very similar to what you're seeing here with uh, the master driver, default driver and the two uh, motors that we have defined and all of them being turned off. Now let's take a look at the driver configuration. The driver in both Tango terminology is our Arduino board that we have connected to our computer. You give it a name, you should make sure that it is connected or that Botango is looking at the correct USB port and you can do a few other configurations which should not be needed at the moment. Let's turn our default driver on by making it live. When you do go back to the status page of our hardware, you will see that the default driver has been turned live, but the master, the overall environment, and our two motors are still off. So let's change that. Let's go back to the build screen of Potengo. What we still need to do is tell Botango the physical address of our motors. For this, please select the next servo 
and on the parts setup scroll down to connection select i2c and pin as the method of connection and for our current setup we can leave the i2c address at 40 and as we are dealing with the first connected servo it's pin 0. Now do the same changes for the head servo. Connection to I2C and pin. The I2C address can stay 40 but pin needs to be 1. Now we are ready to verify if manipulating our servos in the modeled world will have any impact in the real world. For this we need to go to the animate screen of Botengo. So crossing finger everything worked. All you need to do is select any of the uh, motors and visually manipulate them and your servos that are connected to the Arduino should follow the movement. If all this worked out, congratulations, you have your Arduino properly set up for interaction with Botengo. So now we can start doing a real animation for our droid. But this will be something for a future video.